the scriptures. And um, we are doing this. The theme of the year, it's been building a godly character. And we said, this is how we started. Um, thank God this picture is still here. Um, we said, we started to build. When you start to build, you need resources. And we said the resources that we used to build a godly character was the word of God that made us have faith. And when we have faith, we were saved. And because we are saved, we became born again. When we are born again, we become righteousness. There are scriptural references that we mentioned last week, right? I won't go back. And when we have done all this, we receive the Holy Spirit. And when you look at this, the word of God and faith makes the basic foundation of building a godly character. You cannot build the word of the, the, a godly character without the word of God. We need the word of God. So, we said, after you have used this, this allows you to have a godly character. Meaning that because we've been sharing and these topics have been covered, we expect each one of us to be living in a state where we are manifesting a godly character. But, we said, we said a godly character can be threatened. There are things that threaten a godly character and those things are temptations. We spoke about lust, we spoke about this uh, sin, we spoke about uh, disobedience and this and that. But all these can be, can be defeated or overcome by perseverance. So when we started talking about maintaining a godly character, we said one must have perseverance so that you can do away with the threats towards your godly character. The other week we spoke about abiding in Christ. So to maintain, this is something that you already have. We are not building anymore. We are saying we have it, here it is, here is our house. Now we need to furnish it, we need to polish, we need to clean, we need to do this and that like he was talking about. So abiding in Christ, when you abide in Christ, in the presence of God, it means you are in him and he is in you. It is him who will manifest from within you. Am I making sense? And then we spoke about loving God last week. And we said, you cannot obey God if you do not love him. You must love him. The love you have for God must be loving God with your all. Your whole heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your might, your whole body. And when we talk about standing to share, to share scripture, that express the love we have for God. If we give each other the theme and we give ourselves time to read based on the theme we gave each other, that is an expression of love. Because when you love someone, you want to know more about them. When you love someone, you want to please them. When you love someone, you want to live to, to, to reach out to them. Ne? So today we are talking about prayer. Now, how then does prayer play a role in maintaining a godly character? Now, Sister Marira said, prayer is a communication between us and God. Or prayer is a way in which, is a manner in which we reach out to God. Right? The way is a way in which God reach out to us. But prayer is the way in which we reach out to God. Ne? So, when you pray, it maintains your focus. Prayer maintains your focus. We can all agree, you have been in a relationship sometimes in your life. A relationship with your mother, a relationship with your partner, a relationship with your friends and whoever you can be relating with. I don't think any of you relate to someone whom you don't talk to. I don't think any of you relate to someone whom you don't check up on. I don't think some of any of you relate to someone whom you don't care about them. So prayer, it allows for us to maintain the relationship we have with God so that our godly character can continue to manifest. Let me give you a practical example. Sis Flo is my friend. And because she is my friend, we talk a lot about everything. 
what transpires in her life and what transpires in my life. And because we talk a lot, it allows her to know me and it allows me to know her. And because I know her, I know what she likes, I know what she prefers, and I know if I want to please her, this is what I should do. So similarly, when we talk to God, when we are prayerful people, we know what God wants, what God expects, and we get to maintain our focus only in God. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and Hebrews 12 verse 2. It says, fixing our eyes unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. How do you fix your eyes without communicating? How do you fix your eyes without talking, without expressing? How do you fix your eyes to Jesus without spending time with him? Because when you say something, it's fixed. We are saying that is the only place where you look. But if you do not pray, it means you have, you open room for you to communicate with the other people. You open room for you to communicate with the other kingdoms. You open room for you to communicate with the world. But when you keep yourself in constant communication with God, she gave a practical example of David. When you look, you go and read about David, we start hearing about David from the book of Samuel. When you read from the book of Samuel, Kings, and you go to the book of Psalms, you will realize that King David was a prayerful person. Let's read. Um, let's read in the book of Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 from verse 15 to 16. Can we have it in English? Luke 5, 15 to 16. Yes. Okay, and it reads as follows. Yet the news about him spread all the more. So that crowds of people came so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus, he would win. 
with rope, pushed away everyone, gave himself some space to go and draw again the strength in prayer. That is how powerful prayer is. As children of God, you need to withdraw from the public. You need to withdraw from the synagogues. You need to withdraw from your friends. Withdraw from relationships and say, I'm giving myself time to pray. The Bible said they would go and look for him early in the morning. But he would not be there. Have people ever looked for us and find us in prayer? Have people ever looked at us for us? Have people ever asked, why have you been hiding? And we say, I have been dedicating myself to prayer. I realize that there is nothing that makes prayer mount, mountain prayer to be more powerful than your room prayer. Ne? Hello? Do you understand? There is nothing that makes mountain prayer to be more powerful than praying in your room. The only difference is that when you take your time and leave your phone and leave your family and go to the mountain, you are withdrawing. Of which you can still do in your room. You can still switch off your laptop, switch off your phone, put everyone out, lock your room and withdraw. So people didn't understand this message that they thought may go Rabbana Talani it's more powerful than praying in their rooms. But it is not because the, there are still people who go to the prayer mountains and take pictures posing on the rocks holding Bibles. Did you withdraw? Jesus said, when you pray, don't do it like the synagogues. Now, let me put this clear. Screaming, shouting, being loud, making noise when you are praying, it's not wrong. The word of God say, shout out. Shout out. It's not wrong. If you have a loud voice like me and when you pray, you, you make noise, it's not wrong. But something that is wrong is the intention. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, he didn't say them praying in the synagogue was wrong. He didn't say them praying in the street corners was wrong. He said because they are doing it to, for people to recognize and know and reward them, not for God. So you need to, to understand this. When you pray, you don't do it for people to know you pray. You don't do it for people to see you pray. But you do it for God so that God can reward. So the reason why Jesus would withdraw, go to the mountain, it's because prayer is important. He wouldn't have prayed if it wasn't. Now let me read quickly. I think, uh, what's, what's the time? 22 past. I will be done by half past me and then we'll discuss for about 15 minutes. Let's quickly read in the book of Luke chapter 18, Karabha, the one you, you quoted for us the other day. Yes, that's why. It says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought to pray and not to faint. When you look at the word ought, it means must. Can we have it in the NIV? Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should pray, they should always pray and not give up. Good. They should always. When we talk about words like should, must, ought, we are talking about something that you're obligated to do. It's not a plea. It's not you are you are not asked, you are not begged, you are told. It is a mandate you must do. Now Jesus said to them, men ought to pray. We need to pray always and not get tired. This is how significant prayer is. As a child of God, you have to pray. Now, when we read in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Now, I want to talk about these two scriptures. 
be maintained. Without praying continuously, relationship with God cannot be maintained. Without praying continuously, your love for God cannot be expressed. Without praying continuously, you cannot abide in Christ because it is prayer that makes us stick closer and closer to God. How many of us pray here? Let's see by the raise of hands. How many of us pray? Everyone prays. And how many of us say the things we have heard other people say when we are praying? How many of us say the things because we have heard someone saying them? Oh, yeah. Be it our pastor, be it our mothers. <laughs> you know why I'm asking this question? Because in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, Jesus Christ takes his time and teach the disciples how to pray. He wasn't saying to them, that is the prayer you must make. No. I, I know people say this is the prayer of the Lord. He wasn't saying this is the prayer for everyone to pray every time when they pray. He but he was saying when we talk about prayer, it must com be comprised of all these aspects in Matthew chapter 6. Mm. Now, the reason why I ask that question is because a lot of us, we pray and say things in prayers because we have heard our mother say them. I, I just forgot one phrase that my mother used to say when she is praying. And I grew up saying it. Mm. She used to say it towards the end of the prayer. <coughs> Every time she would say that phrase, I, I think I'll remember if I hear her pray again when I go home. And I grew up praying and I'll conclude with that word that I heard from my mother. And it sounded so, <clears throat> it makes my prayer have that thing, you know. And as I was growing, I, I started praying the other day and I said, God, I'm tired of imitating. I'm tired of saying things. I want you to teach me what prayer is. And I want you to teach me how to pray. And let me tell you something. The rain of prayer didn't come down from heaven and fall on me. And I started learning how to pray. No. But when I started reading the word of God on a regular basis, after every single scripture that I read, I find prayer. In every single scripture, when I read, when I'm reading in the book of, of Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that men ought to pray and not get weary, I found a prayer that my God, help me stand strong, stand firm in prayer, regardless of the circumstances that can make me get tired, but help me, O oh Lord, to pray always. Is that something I'm taught? No. It's coming from the scripture. So a lot of us today, we are struggling to connect with God. We are struggling to focus in prayer because we are still going and praying according to the norms of the church. I've been to churches where the whole church pray the same thing. I've been to churches where the whole church speak the same tongues. I've heard people who follow prophet man man and they pray exactly. Duplication of the prophet. But the prayer that we are talking about, a prayer to maintain a godly character. This is a prayer that God has taught you. It is a prayer that allows, remember, the difference between the Gentiles and the children of God is that the Gentiles do not have the word of God mm. and the Gentiles do not have the Holy Spirit mm. in them. In the book of Romans, I think it's chapter 12, verse 12. Let me confirm. Uh, let me confirm that scripture. It's Romans 8, verse 26. The Bible says, and the Holy Spirit intercede for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So when you pray, you allow for your Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit in you to the make utterance. Mm. The Bible says we do not know, even when we do not know what to say in prayer. Have you ever closed your eyes and say, Holy Spirit, pray? Can you see her? How many things are there in prayer of which we were about to leave today? 
without having said any of them. There is a lot of, of scriptures that I have. But one thing I want you to understand is that prayer is mandatory. Prayer is the source, is the fuel of a Christian life. When you get, when you run out of petrol, your car stops. When your prayer life stops, your godly character stops. Your spiritual life stops. But when you start praying, you will realize, I mean, I'm talking to people here. Vane, you know, you know there are those weeks that you can spend without praying because of whatever that's keeping you busy. And when you start going back to prayer, you realize, oh, hey, that week I've been doing nothing. And it seems like I haven't even been living. My life was breaking down. Because prayer is a fuel. Jesus Christ said, pray that you do not enter into temptation. So when you are maintaining a godly character, prayer stands here. It prevents us from entering into temptation. Because when you constantly communicate with God, you remain in Him. And when you remain in Him, when sin is coming your way, God will remind you. That is temptation. Hallelujah. My time is up. Let me quickly browse through because we won't finish. I think we should continue with the same thing next week. Because there's a lot to, to, learn, to learn about in prayer. When you read Colossians 4.2, it speaks about continuing in prayer. When we talk about something continuous, it's something non-stop. So we don't only pray when our eyes are closed. And we don't stop praying when we say amen. Prayer is something that a Christian lives within. When you breathe, it's prayer. When you open a tap and you see water coming out, that's prayer. To say, oh Lord, thank you that I have water. When you just lift up your head off the bed, Lord, thank you that I can still lift up my head. When you are walking to school, Lord, thank you that I can still walk to school and you are protecting me. When you are sitting in class and listening to the lecturer, say, Lord, thank you that I am here attending this class. Help me understand. When you are going back to your rest, you still say, Lord, I'm grateful you protected me. Prayer is something that you abide in. Mm. That's why the Bible says, continue in prayer. If you learned English, when we talk about something that is within, um, I have this one. When we talk about prayer, this is on. This is on. It's outside. Ne? But it says continue in prayer. In prayer. Can you see the, the watch? What are you seeing? It means the devil, the enemy, whatever is coming your way, doesn't see you. But they see that is which is containing you, which is what? Prayer. Yeah. You abide in it. You dwell inside of prayer. It means you are covered in prayer. Everything, everywhere, every how. You abide in prayer. You continue in prayer. You don't depart from prayer. When you are talking, when you are cooking, when you are interacting with people, prayer. So children of God, today I will stop here to say you cannot maintain a godly character if you are not abiding in prayer. The Bible says continue in prayer.